Hi, my name is Kenna Grubb, and for this project, I got um, chosen to types of metamorphism. Um, metamorphism occurs all over the world, and it can be seen anywhere, but there are many types, and they all produce a different type of rock. Just a general insight, metamorphism is where um, pressure, temperature, and nature occurs to change a rock. Um, it takes an old dusty rock that comes from the earth and changes it into something new and valuable that everyone uses. Um, if we didn't have this um, process, we wouldn't have a lot of things that we have today. Um, as you can see, there are many different types of metamorphism. Um, there's regional contact, dynamic shock, hydrothermal, and burial, and each of them has a slightly different process and creates um, a slightly different rock. As you can see, there are three with stars, and those are the three main types of metamorphism, which is regional, contact, and dynamic. Um, each one is very important in its own way. Um, metamorphism is important because it changes materials and geologic um, texture and rocks. There are various types that all do all different processes. Um, they include the ones on the slide. Um, each one, like I said, has a slightly different process and we will go into more detail um, as the slides go on. But right here, it's just a brief overview. Um, regional, it happens over large um, areas and it's very high temperature and pressure. Um, contact, um, it includes magma that separates it from the other ones. Dynamic is, um, you can see uh, plate tectonics in this one. Shock is not very common, but it's really cool. Um, it's whenever a meteor or something strikes the earth. Um, hydrothermal, it takes um, chemically active water in the ground and um, seeps it into the neighboring rock and changes it that way. And burial is the most common. You can pretty much see this anywhere. And it takes a rock and buries it in the ground for a long period of time um, under extreme heat and pressure and changes the rock. But we will go into more detail as this presentation goes on. So the first one we're going to talk about is regional metamorphism. Um, like I said before, it occurs over very large areas and um, it builds mountains. Um, and rocks are formed by heavy weight and temperatures deep below um, the Earth's surface. This is one of the main ones, as you can see the stars. Um, regional metamorphism is when large region, or regions of crustal rock move to high temperatures and pressure. This changes the texture and the materials of the rock. The high pressure and temperature then bends and breaks the rock, creating a mountain. This produces extensive areas of metamorphism or metamorphic rock. This usually is associated with the way mountains are built. This can be associated with large scale plate tectonics along with the other ones. Um, plate tectonics um, play a major role in um, creating a new rock. As you can see um, in this um, figure, um, you can see where um, the rock um, is pushed up to make a mountain. And I guess like an example of that might be the Appalachian Mountains. Um, here's another major type, which is contact. Um, as you can, or I'll explain the figures after I talk a little bit about it. Um, contact metamorphism is the same process as others, but occurs a lot, or occurs with excessive temperature and heat, and it includes magma. Magma comes in contact with cooler country rock, then crystallizes and transfers the heat to its neighboring rocks. The effects that happen here are often called metamorphic alu. Um, regional and contact work together to usually build mountains. As you can see in both of these figures, um, magma plays a very big role in contact metamorphism. Um, it not only changes one rock at a time, but it seeps into neighboring rocks, which um, it can produce many different types of rocks that we see today. And here is the third and final major type of metamorphism, which is dynamic. Um, dynamic, you can see, it's this one's very popular with plate tectonics because it, as you can see in the figure, takes the earth and does like this and like grinds the rock and of course has high heat and pressure and um, changes the pressure which um, creates a different texture and grains in the rock. That's how it builds a new one. Dynamic, or dynamic metamorphism occurs along faults in Earth's crust that have a large amount of movement. This process is limited to faults that are widespread. So this, um, 
this type of metamorphism has to have a plate tectonic. Um, so it has to fall along one of those, but it is very widespread when it does. Um, crushing and smearing take place along with high temperatures and pressure. The type of rock um, can differ on how this process plays out. The rock will see um, not only chemical but mechanical changes as the um, finished product. As you can tell by the name, dynamic means different. So the final product can um, have many different um, products at the end. Okay, this is one of my favorite. It's very unique. We don't see it a lot, but it's shock metamorphism. Um, this occurs whenever um, something large um, strikes the earth and um, it, it has to have excessive um, pressure and temperature that causes deforms in the underlying rock. It usually happens when a meteor or comet strikes the earth. It creates meteor grains and shatter cones on the impact rock. Um, it mostly produces shazite and um, coceite. It's very uncommon, but it would be amazing to see this done. And I'm sure, like, in the past, whenever the dinosaurs um, got extinct, this is why a big um, meteor struck the Earth. And I'm pretty, and a bunch of rocks were probably made from that. As you can see in both diagrams, I like diagram A because it's more visual, and it actually shows a meteorite striking the Earth. And it's in shock through the rock layers, which will eventually change them. Um, thermometamorphism is um, pretty much what it says in the name. It has um, a chemically, a chemical water and it seeps into neighboring rocks. Um, the process of this includes br um, blistering temperatures and pressures that include hydrothermal fluids that can be found in areas with low pressure and temperatures also. So this process can be done at high and low um, temperatures and pressure. A hot chemically active water mixes with older um, rock known as country rock. The most popular place to see this is in hot springs um, in Yellowstone. I personally find this. This one's actually really um, cool too, along with the shock. So the, those two are my favorite. Uh, this happens when veins, or the result is when veins, hot water moves through cracks in bedrock. And um, as you can see in diagram A and B, um, cold water will seep through the um, earth's surface or crust and meet um, a high temperature and pressure and just like um, like a geyser at Yellowstone and blow to the top. Um, as you can see in the slide, it can um, this can result in many different types of rocks like talc, clay, um, serpine, like many different types. So um, the final type of metamorphism is burial, which is the most common. Um, burial metamorphism is the most common type and is low grade. It can happen either high or low pressure temperatures, so it can vary from, um, you can have super hot or super cold, and this will still be done. During this process, it undergoes stress that continues to bury the rock under um, undergoing metamorphism. This, um, usually the final product of this is non-foliated metamorphic rock. This happens anywhere. It's just where a rock um, gets taken under Earth's surface, like all the soil and just all the pressure will change it to something new. Um, this slide just shows you um, many different types of metamorphic rocks that are the product of the types of metamorphism that we just went over. So, um, metamorphic rocks is formed by excessive temperature and pressures that transform older rock into a new, different rock. As this process happens, it changes the original rock um, chemical and physical properties. The main rocks include igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. As this process finishes, um, it can create several different types of rocks that include marble, slate, Guinness, and many others. Um, this process can pr happen pretty much anywhere, but some are more common than others, like um, burial is the most common. Um, hydrothermal doesn't really happen around here. It more happens in Yellowstone and the shock. Usually meteors don't hit Earth that often. Um, as you can see in all the diagrams, the new pretty rock, the new unique and pretty rocks that are made from the old dusty ones. So metamorphic facies and zones can range from high to low grade. Um, as you can see in this, there are many different types 
of faces that all create, um, that all have a different area and create a different thing. The metamorphic zones gradually move from high to low grade. A zone is where the various process happen and each zone is only stable for a certain type of metamorphism. Metamorphic facies are materials that form under certain pressures and temperatures. There are many possible facies that can be the final product. The main one is zeolite, green, fit, blue shit, and then um, gradual. So you can see all these here, um, each one has a different temperature and pressure that create a different rock. And you can see in um, both diagrams that um, they all have a different section and they all will produce something different at the end of the process. Um, metamorphism and plate tectonics um, go together very well because in some processes you have to have plate tectonics. Um, Metamorphism and place tectons are a major influence on all the types of metamorphism and the creation of metamorphic rocks. Plate tectonics create the extreme heat and pressure that are needed to create new rocks. The way the plates move create a different rock or a different form of metamorphism. Um, as you can see, it just depends how, if it smears, if it creates stress, if it folds, it will all, um, each one may produce something different. And if it has high pressure or if magma is included, it just, it just depends, honestly. Um, there are many different types of creations of metamorphism. Um, if, if metamorphism wasn't a thing, we would not have many things that we have today. The creation of metamorphism just shows um, a few of many advantages that come from metamorphism. It all started when civilization started to develop, develop and they took all these new rocks and created something amazing. Um, they created things such as farming, hunting, jewelry, temples, and many other things that we can still find today. This shows how important that it is not only to the environment, but to humans living every day. Um, metamorphism is something amazing that the earth does, and it produces something that we all see and probably all use. Um, as you can see in, um, we'll start with figure A. Um, as civilizations did start to develop, they started to use tools and like stuff to keep themselves alive and hunt with this fish. And we still use some of it today. Um, you can still find airheads in fields sometime, and that is a product of metamorphism. Um, as you can see in B, that's jewelry. I'm sure every girl wears a piece of jewelry, and that's probably from a form of metamorphism. And castles that are still actually standing today are made of um, different uh, products of different types of metamorphism and it's amazing because they're like so strong and how earth can just change um, an old rock into something new just by this process and they're actually still standing today as you can see and see and I believe that we still use um, many types of rocks still used today as you can see hokey stone look all around campus and we use that today and it's still strong and upholding and this is just an amazing part of um, geology and how earth can help us. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed this and learned something new. Thank you.